Man, do we have a treat for you this morning. We are ready. Man, you guys, man, one of the things that just gets me to come alive sometimes is growth and seeing people step into things that are new and seeing people step into situations where they are like able to prove themselves and, and, and not prove like some selves to us, but to prove themselves to their own worth and what God cr truly created them to be. And this morning, I just want to uh, just kind of set the tone this morning that we get to experience that this morning. It's a beautiful thing. And uh, Nathan's going to be sharing the word with us this morning. And um, I'm just so excited. I'm, I'm so blessed that uh, God has allowed us, God has allowed me to be a part of his life. And that not just as Nathan through the Coast Guard was brought to us, but I feel like we were brought to him and his family. And uh, this is what we're here for, guys. Like we're here to celebrate each other. We're here to celebrate God, and through that revelation of that he brought us into glorious light, that he brought us into who we are from darkness into light, we see, we can now see. We're no longer blind. We're no longer, uh, you know, looking through a, a diminished glass of things, that we see things. And today, I get to see a brother in Christ for who tr truly God made him. So this morning, come on, let's, let's pray, let's let's lift up the name of Jesus. You guys ready? Dear Heavenly Father, I just thank you that your light, Lord God, that shines bright, brighter than all the stars in the sky, Lord God, illuminates our hearts, Lord. And we get to see ourselves for the way that you truly made us, God. This morning, Lord God, open up the eyes of our hearts, Lord Jesus, that we may see you, God. I want to see you, God, for who you are. Because you are beauty in the truest form, God. You are truth in the truest form, Lord God. You are love in the truest form. We praise you and we honor you, Jesus. Come and have your way. And everybody said, amen. We're not going to try the clapping thing this time. That doesn't mean you can't clap if you want to. Come on. Cause in your light, I find my strength. In your I overcome. In your I lose myself in your love. Come on. You've turned my tears of sadness into such joy and gladness. My heart can't keep it. I shout it, shout it. You've turned my tears of sadness into such joy and gladness. My heart can't keep it. I shout it. In your joy, I find my strength. In your hope, I overcome. In your grace, I lose myself. It's in your love. You turn my tears of sadness into such joy and gladness. My heart can't keep you turn my tears of sadness into such joy and gladness. My heart can't keep it. I shout, shout it. Oh. Come on, whoa.
my tears of sadness into such joy and gladness. My heart can't keep it. I'm shouting, shouting. You turn my tears of sadness into such joy and gladness. My heart can't keep it. Shouting, shouting. Whoa, oh, whoa, oh. Tears of sadness into such joy and gladness. My heart can't keep it. Shout it. You've turned my tears of sadness into such joy and gladness. My heart can't keep it. Shout it. Without your love, sleep to the darkness. If it wasn't for the cross, you have won me with your kindness. Chase me down when I was lost. Where would I be if it wasn't for the cross? Come on. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Was a prisoner. Now I'm not. With your blood, you by my freedom. Hallelujah. All my shame was met with mercy. Now your mercy will be my song. Oh, the glory, oh, the power of the cross. blood you by my freedom hallelujah on the cross yeah by your stripes I'm by your death I live the power of sin is all come on sing it out and he's finishing by your stripes 
your blood you by my freedom hallelujah on the cross and hallelujah thank you Jesus I was a prisoner now I'm not with your blood with your blood Nothing but the blood can wash away all the lies. Nothing but the blood can cleanse these eyes.
standing in the fire I will not be overcome through the valley of the shadow I will not fear I am not alone I am
Let's pray for our offering this morning. Lord, I thank you for the promise of your word that says, the darkness is passing and the true light has already begun to shine. And we thank you, Lord, that you are that light to our lives and to our path and that you've never left us alone and will not leave us alone. We thank you for all you do and all you mean to us. And we thank you, Lord, that you give us the ability to be a blessing to others. And so we pray this blessing on this offering today. And thank you that you will keep speaking to hearts and working in our hearts this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. As you continue to worship, if you have an offering, please bring it forward. Thank you. You're my strength. You're my defender. You're my refuge in the storm. Through these trials, you've always been faithful. You bring healing to my soul. I am not alone. I am not alone. You will go before me. You will never leave me. I am not alone. I am not alone. You will go before me. You will never leave me. I am not alone. I am not alone. You will go before me. You will never leave me. Lord, thank you for tell, letting us know that you're, we're never alone, that you're always right there with us. The fear is crippling, you're there, and you're faithful. Lord, prepare our hearts as we listen to your word today. Help us to focus on you and only you today. Let these words be yours and not mine. It's in your name we pray. Amen. You guys may be seated. Well, if you guys haven't noticed, I am not Pastor Andy. I do what I can. Well, welcome to New Life. I am Nathan Landrum. Uh, I've been coming to New Life for about two years uh, with my wife, Jessica, and my kids, August and Ethan. Uh, you may not know me. Uh, I'm in the Coast Guard, uh, stationed on one of the big boats down by the Maritime Museum. Uh, so I'm only here about half the year. I am a information systems technician, which in layman's terms, I'm just a computer nerd. So uh, I was pretty honored when Pastor Andy asked me to speak today. Uh, when he gave me the message, I was, <laughs> I immediately just looked at, it, looked at it and I was like, you know what? He, he didn't ask me to preach. God had me preach this message because... He convicted me of it. This message is about the distracted disciple. And I've been, I've been that disciple for going on 18 years now. We're going to be in Luke chapter 10. Uh, after teaching you through Galilee, Jesus returned to Jerusalem for the Feast of Tabernacles. He spoke in Jerusalem and visited his friends Martha and Mary in Bethany. Now, you may remember Martha and Mary uh, from the John's Gospel, uh, their brother Lazarus, when he died and Jesus brought him back from the dead four days later. Well, Luke's Gospel focuses more on the contrast between Martha and Mary. And it says in Luke chapter 10, verse 38 through 42, As Jesus and his disciples were on their way, he came to a village where a woman named Martha opened her home to him. She had a sister called Mary who sat at the Lord's feet, listening to what he said. But Martha was so, so distracted by all the preparations that had to be made. 
Now, both of these women, they love Jesus, and they were serving Jesus, but they were serving in two totally different ways. To me, Martha sounds like the older of the sisters, the woman in charge, making all the preparations for the feast. Uh, and she seemed to take great pride in that. Uh, she was the first one to invite Jesus into her home. She was being hospitable. Now, I mean, I can see her running around, telling everybody sweet tea, you know, you know, cooking on the grill, making sure, you know, all the food's good, uh, sweeping up all the messes that, that have been made. Into all the dishes. But see, Martha's distractions and worry leave no room for the most important aspect of hospitality gracious attention to their guest. There is no greater hospitality than just listening to your guest. How much more so when that guest was Jesus? Now, it doesn't say it in the text, but I imagine she could probably hear Jesus the entire time that she was doing her thing. But she wasn't listening. Hearing is effortless, a passive trait. You don't have to think to hear something. It just happens. You can be asleep, and you can still hear the things going on around you. Listening, however, goes far beyond just hearing. It's intentional. It's focused. It literally means paying attention to the words that are being spoken with the intention of understanding that person. She gets so focused Sorry, scratch that. Sorry. Martha gets upset at the sight of her, her sister not helping, helping her. And instead of politely asking her sister for her hand, Martha goes directly to Jesus and tries to embarrass her. Further in verse 40, it says, She came to him and asked, Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me to do the work by myself? Tell her to help me. And it, I just thought about my kids as soon as I heard that. I was like, yeah. Mom, I'll, August isn't helping me pick up. You know, and I immediately get mad, but, but the Lord doesn't get mad. He doesn't get angry. Verses 41 through 42 says, Martha, Martha, the Lord answered, you are worried and upset about many things, but few things are needed, or indeed only one. Mary has chosen what is better, and it will not be taken away from her. Notice he repeats her name twice, Martha, Martha. Now, I would love to hear Jesus say my name, but if he says my name twice, you probably better listen because he's going to tell you something important. And he doesn't correct her for her works. No, he corrects her for her attitude of the works, that she's so focused on the many things when only the one thing is needed, losing her focus on the one thing that matters, Jesus. And without Jesus, her works meant absolutely nothing. Jesus says in John 15 and 5, I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. If you do not remain in me, you are like a branch that is thrown away and withers. Such branches are picked up, thrown into the fire and burned. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. This is to my Father's glory that you may that you bear much fruit, showing yourself to be my disciples. While Martha, Martha is stressing and being prideful about her home, Mary was being humble. She was being teachable. From Jesus' own mouth, she had chosen what was better, and it would not be taken for, from her. And I thought about what that meant. And he means that while Martha's works are of this world, works that would die with her, while Martha was working to feed Jesus and her disciples, Mary was being fed by Jesus with words of life. Words that are eternal and an endless supply. A sustenance that could never be taken away. Deuteronomy 8.3 He humbled you, causing you to hunger, and then feeding you with manna, which neither you nor your ancestors had known, to teach you that man does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of the Lord. Jesus repeats it in Matthew 4, when he's tempted by the devil. Jesus answered, it is written, man shall not live on bread alone, but on the every word that comes from the mouth of God. See, focus on him. The details will fall into place. He will provide everything that is needed. Matthew 6, 31. 
So do not worry, saying, what shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. I thought maybe Martha could have just kept things simple. Maybe instead of an elaborate meal, she could have just thrown some Hot Pockets in the microwave. You know? I mean, God had already fed the 5,000 with five loaves and two fish. What could he do with some hamburger helper? <laughs> you know? I, I mean, he gets a couple of Roombas, little robot, robotic vacuums. Those things are great. My wife has the, the, ro- the vacuum and the mop. It's amazing. You just set it and forget it. <laughs> Focus on the reason for the celebration, not the celebration. The reason for the celebration was Jesus. I really wanted to come here today and tell you I was Mary, that I would sit at the feet of Jesus. But the more I read, the more I realized I was Martha. Have been for a long time. See, for years I've served in churches. Uh, me and my wife have been together for 18 years, and we've been to church pretty much most Sundays. And I usually find my home sitting behind the soundboard where I'm comfortable. But I wasn't sitting at the feet of Jesus. Now, not to say that that wasn't a, a good thing to do. They needed it. But I wasn't feeding myself. I wasn't being fed. He wasn't feeding me. I was, wonder, I was getting frustrated, and I was wondering why I wasn't growing spiritually. It's because I wasn't spending time at his feet. Even putting this message to get together today, I was Martha. I kept trying to perfect it. I struggled. You can ask Pastor Andy. I was so focused on trying to make this sound perfect and make my words so elaborate. They were like, oh, he's so smart. <laughs> but it didn't come together until I just kneeled. Stop trying to make everything perfect, because the perfect thing was sitting right in front of me. So I wrote, I rewrote, I scrapped entirely. I got frustrated. <laughs> so I just became Mary. I just meditated on what he was trying to tell me. I tried to convince myself, though, well, if Jesus was right here, I would be at his feet, of course, you know. But the truth is, he's, he's right here. Just because we can't physically see him doesn't mean he's not right here. Every time we open this book, we're at his feet. Every time Brendan's praising, we're at his feet. Every time we're in a moment of prayer, we're at his feet. He's always teaching. But are we hearing him or are we listening? If we're going to fully follow our Heavenly Father, we're going to need to pay attention to his messages. His divine communication comes from a variety of sources. His word, an encouraging friend, a song, even a gentle whisper. The mode of of God's communication is fast, but that's because he's such a big God. And and as a communication expert, desiring to be continually connected to you. See, I've spent a lot of time hearing him, but only recently learned to listen. See, this past deployment uh, was a very difficult one for me. Uh, Before leaving, Pastor had asked me to speak. After some debate, I told him I would think about it and I'd pray about it. Because it's not my wheelhouse, it's not my comfort zone. And right before I left, uh, I got the news from a fr- I got a uh, call from a friend saying his health was not in the best of shape. Well, I got underway, and about two weeks in, I received news that my friend, my best friend of the past 14 years, was in the hospital and was not doing well. Needless to say, I didn't take the news well. I happened to be in the port call, uh, port call at the time. So I spent one evening on the back of my boat, crying my eyes out, and a couple of sailors came and talked to me. 
And after I shed some tears and some feelings with him, I began to share my heart for Jesus and all he's done for me. After a couple hours later, after talking to him, these guys had previously told me before saying that church was not their thing, that they're not interested. They were now saying, if I got up and talked, they would come. And I was like, me? Why me? It was encouraging, though, to hear that word. Three weeks later, in another port call, I received more news that my friend's outlook was actually getting a lot worse. And I, again, I was devastated. The same thing happened. I was sitting around just enjoying the nice sun, you know, but I was crying, and a couple guys came around me and started talking to me. I began to share my, my, my feelings and about my friend, and then, again, it turned into a conversation about Jesus. They told me they had been feeling like they were wanting to get involved in a church, but just weren't exactly sure where. I later had all these sailors that I had talked to this, the next Sunday, I had a church service. And if I didn't mention this before, I run the church's boat services on board. Uh, God has really called me out and something that is not in my wheelhouse. But you know what? I, it's my weakness that his glory has shown. So These guys are showing up to church who told me they wouldn't. So I was stepping out in faith, and all my comforts, and these guys were cheering me on. See, God was speaking to me through people through these sailors. The following night, we were back out to sea, and I received the devastating news that my friend had passed. My heart shattered. I apologize if I get a little uh, emotional because it's still rough. I had not experienced that much pain since the loss of my father 17 years prior, and now I was 3,000 miles away from my family, from my emotional support system. I fell to my knees crying to God for, help, for his help and his wisdom. Why did this happen to happen to my friend, especially when I'm helpless out here on the water? And immediately, like a light switch, I began to feel peace, and I couldn't explain it. Not until I opened my Bible and began reading. He led me to Philippians 4.4. 4. Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again. Rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your heart and your minds in Christ Jesus. You see, he was speaking to me through his word. So I began praying a prayer of thanksgiving for my friend. Just thanking God for giving him, him in my life and being a, such a blessing to my family and to me and to all the people that he was a blessing to. And then just like a gentle whisper, I heard it. He told me, look at all the good things that have happened because of this situation. You have constantly started talking to people and telling people about me and bringing them to me. And then he said something mind-blowing. He told me the reason why I was out during the storm. He said so that I would be away from the world's distractions. So I could focus on him and our relationship. So that my only support system was him. He was speaking to me through the Holy Spirit. You see, he'd been trying to get my attention for a, whole, for a long time. I could hear him, but I wasn't listening. I was focused on the world around me instead of the one who has been right beside me the whole time, guiding me, loving me, and forgiving me. I had to go to the desert to focus my attention. Don't make the same mistake I did. See, the enemy just doesn't have control over your life. So he tries to fill your life with so many distractions that you'll lose your focus on the one that gives you that life. 1 Peter 5, 8 says, Be sober-minded and alert. Your adversary, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion seeking someone to devour. You know what I want to learn a fun fact about lions that I learned? 
Anybody remember the old lion tamers? They would use a whip and a chair to, you know, tame a lion. Do you know why they used the chair? I always thought it was just to keep, you know, something between him and the lion. But the truth is the lion can't focus on the four legs of the chair. So when it sees the four legs coming at it, it doesn't know what to focus on, so it loses all its concentration. And that's what the, the enemy will try and do. He will try and put so many things in front of you that you lose focus. Keep your focus on him. Without him, your works mean, mean nothing. Now, don't misunderstand this, what I'm trying to say here today. Because if you do, pastor will never let me get up here again. <laughs> the works are important. I mean, I can just see him calling me later like, where did all my volunteers go? The works still have to get done. John 14, 12 says, Very truly I tell you, whoever believes in me will do the works I have been doing, and they will do even greater things than these. Because I am going to the Father, and I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. You may ask anything in my name, and I will do it. See, the church needs Marthas. I mean, where would the church be without will people willing to perform the services of you know, hospitality? and welcoming people in. But you have to have the heart of a Mary, too. You have to dwell in the presence of the Lord, meditate on his word, and be fed. You can't feed others unless you've been fed yourself. See, the works are important, but the reason for the works can get lost when you focus on the works instead of the reason. And the reason is Jesus. Now, can we all pray real quick? As the worship team comes up. Father, I thank you for this message today. Thank you for these people. Speak to them like you've been speaking to me. You're always talking. Help us to listen. Encourage our hearts and deliver us from these fruitless distractions. Help us to focus only on you and your love. My question today for everyone here is who are you? Be honest with yourself. Are you a Martha? Are you so busy doing things for Jesus that you're not spending any time with him? You hear him, but you're not listening. Maybe you need to fix your focus today. How many here can honestly say they're a Martha? Yeah, me too. <laughs> Maybe you're Mary. If so, what's he saying to you? And are you living that out? Are you using the words that he speaks into you to speak into others? Maybe you're neither. Maybe you haven't invited Jesus into your life yet. What are you waiting for? He's at the door knocking, wanting to come in and welcome you to the greatest celebration there is. Don't wait. Would y'all stand? Now if that's, if, if I describe any of you guys here today, just come at the, come into the altar, it's not too late. Come to the altar. Kneel at his feet. Love to, we'd love to pray with you. Lord, I pray, I pray that you, we see you today. Maybe not with our eyes, but with our hearts. Help us to tune our hearts to you and give focus only on you.
my perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways. To You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways. Oh, you are perfect in all of your ways. You are. You are perfect. You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all. my mistake don't have to go to the desert it's right here Lord I thank you for this day thank you for the confidence to come up here and and just give your word thank you for speaking to me thank you for being there with me through every single step of the way and thank you for calling me deeper us this week. Help us to be focused on you here and to hear you and listen to you. It's in your name I pray. And all of new life said. Thanks guys.